It's that time once again. Time for another edition of the Happy Camper Radio Show. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper. My job, of course, is to make a happy camper out of you. Are you sick and tired of the high gas prices? Gas prices are going through the roof right about now. And with vacation time around the corner, for some people, it may mean the difference between a long-distance dream vacation or one close to home. We'll talk about it today. It's gas prices and vacation on this edition of Happy Camper Radio. Stick around for it. And, of course, the Happy Camper Radio Show can be heard all around the world by great listeners like yourself. You can find us in the iTunes Store, Podbean, Myro Guide, Stitcher, the BlackBerry Podcast Directory, iHeartRadio, and now on Google Play Music. Tell your friends to tune into Happy Camper Radio today. Daniel, welcome back. Oh, let me run your microphone volume up there. Okay, now we can hear you. Hello, how's it going? Oh, oh, you wanted me to speak? Yeah, right. that, that would be very okay. nice. Got it. All right, you're joining us today, and guess what? You brought the boss with you, didn't you? Yep. Oh, hello, Deidre. Hello. Glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here. Okay, you all rested? Are you all back in full gear again? You're no. Ready? Are you ready to go back to work? No. 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 After this, we're going back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> We've been sleeping all day. Oh, my heavens. Well, tell me, you probably slept very well on that camping trip, didn't you? Uh... We there's did. a lot of birds outside. There Good were a lot of God, birds. There's a lot of birds. We had a whooper will like we, we right had, outside our camper. There was a nature center at the place we went to. We went to Gulf uh, Gulf State, State Park in uh, Alabama, and they had a nature center. And so they had a bird exhibit. So we were asking about all the birds that were keeping us up at night. <laughs> that they did, but they did a good job. And this they was, did. You just broke out your brand new pop-up camper, the one that you had just recently purchased. Brand new were, 2003. Yeah. 2003. <laughs> well, hey, it's brand new if you used it for the first time. Yeah. And uh, there were a couple of uh, hidden gems in there for us. Really? Yeah. Tell us about it. Deidre. Uh, That's your cue. At the grill. <laughs> the grill. <laughs> yeah, so we found a uh, Coleman party grill mm-hmm. that the previous campers had had. Um, so it worked out great. And you didn't know it was in there? Nope. No, wow. we um, we popped it open. There was also a CD player in there. Compact uh, disc for you old people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, no, it was it was really nice. We we uh, we loved it. Uh, it was perfect 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 for us so um and also they have those things that you put on the what do you oh use yeah them? the bunk end like uh, the bunk end lights and uh there was the fans that you can attach into um like a little headphone jack that's yeah. attached to the lights no i was talking about the things that you put on the outside the reflector things oh yeah yeah, yeah. The, um so they also have solar bunk ends uh in there so the uh previous campers were we also had four camping chairs in there, one that had a footstool. The uh, previous owners certainly had themselves decked out, so uh, it was it was good for us. Well, it sounds <laughs> like they wanted you to be decked out, and that's why they threw all those bells and whistles in there whenever you bought that. That's that's terrific. They did. It was so, good. So did, did it uh, meet up to your expectations? It met up to it and exceeded. Well, good. So I know, I know, uh, I know. Somebody came running into a room here uh, last week with a photograph saying, "Oh, look at this! They're having a wonderful time." It says, "I bet they are." We were. It was great. Mm-hmm. The uh, we, uh, like Daniel said, we stayed at a Gulf State Park down in Gulf Shores in Alabama, and it was, it was wonderful. It was not. They have beach access. We weren't on the beach, um, but we were in a site that was right off of one of their. They call them their backcountry trails, but they have a ton of bike slash walking trails. They have a nature center over there. They have beach access. Um, we did a kayaking tour um, of the, it's called Lake Shelby that they have over there. They had a ton of campsites. When we checked in, they were booked solid. We I think when we booked our site, there were five sites left available and there's over 400 sites in there, but it was still super quiet. Um, we, we were able to set up our camper, so it felt super private. We couldn't really even see the people next to us. Um, it it was wonderful. Plenty yeah. of space between the neighbors. Yep. That's a, that's an excellent campground. And Skip, let, let me tell you about this uh, bike trail. Mm-hmm. So we're walking on the bike trail, and 
um, they tell us about uh, some butterfly center, right? And then it's like a mile down the road. And so we see it, and then we see these bathrooms to the right. And then right after the bathrooms, they have some kind of contraption that has every tool you could imagine to fix your bicycle and a pump to pump up your air. It was ridiculous. I couldn't believe my eyes. They had like, um, what they had? They had wrenches. They had Allen wrenches. They had everything. It was crazy. <laughs> I was scaring Deidre because she was in the bathroom. And I said, Deidre, Deidre. She's like, oh, what, what? I was like, nothing, nothing. It's not that big a deal, but it was crazy. He did not say that, first of all. Oh, he boy. was hollering at me well, like Well, I can there tell both of you something right now. I doubt you're ever going to see me on a bicycle. So that, <laughs> they had some you nice know, bicycles, you... though. They had those little they three-wheeler had, they bicycles. Had trikes, that you could, yeah. yeah, you could sit on them. And uh, these people that were down the road from us, they have a lot of bicycles nowadays that have a little engine on them or like a little motor so you can, you know, if you don't want to pedal, you just turn on the, uh, not the gas, but the electric and just <laughs> cruise on down the bike trail. Well, I'm glad both of you had a wonderful time. Incidentally, you can get in touch with us here at the Happy Camper Radio Show by calling 404-537-2267. That's 404-537-CAMP. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Cam Talker, add us to Circles on Google+, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to www.happycamperradio.com, and you'll find all of our social media icons right there on the homepage. Click on one of them, connect up with us, and what do we give these folks, Daniel, when they sign up on social media? Ah, oh, shout you, out. Get, ah. Yeah, wonderful shout out. And I think you just blew Deidre's eardrums out with that one. <laughs> I, I live with him. <laughs> no. <laughs> that happened about, you know, 15 years ago. Oh, okay. But anyway, we have some folks we do want to recognize who signed up with us on social media recently. First of all, to Zach Mapes, Danny Brand of Destrahan, Louisiana, Richard Shortridge of Redondo Beach, California, Wayne Lehman of Burn, Indiana. They like us on Facebook. To Pierre Blake, Shells McGuire, Abner Brown, Sheila. They're following us on Twitter. And finally, we want to say hello to Rayanne Helms, who subscribed to our YouTube channel. Thank you all so very much. So glad to have each and every one of you on board. More importantly, thank you for being a part of this great Happy Camper Radio family. If you'd like to be a guest on the program, I'd love to have you get in touch with me. Skip. S-K-I-P at HappyCamperRadio.com. We'll make that happen. Now, one of the things that concerns me about vacation time this year, we all know, and I think each and every one of you have experienced it out there, in the summertime, gas prices start to rise. They say price and demand. I don't know if that's, that's true or not. I don't know if the oil ministers are jacking up the prices or what the case may be. But uh, I'm sure, Daniel, whenever you hauled that pop-up camper down to Alabama, you probably noticed a change in your gas mileage, didn't you? Yes. Okay. So you probably burned up a little more gas than you normally would just driving around town. Yeah, uh, but it wasn't it wasn't really that bad there. Um, as we went down there, we uh, we kind of lucked out. We got it for about two forty nine, and um, I think we bought it again when we went over to Mobile. It was a, a about the same, when but we then came we, back. We got a what was it two thirteen? Yeah, we we Ooh, went to Kroger. Wow. Well, we used our uh, we used our Kroger points okay. for that. But uh, yeah, when we got back into the Atlanta 213, area, two thirteen. That's that's we, pretty cheap. Well, when we got to the Atlanta area, we didn't realize that we were getting off scot free in uh, in Alabama, and the uh, prices were like two seventy up here. So we were we were kind of shocked. Well, I wonder wonder why that is. You know, we can only guess. Uh, it it happens every summer, it seems. And I'm I'm going to take you on back now um, to the year 1998. That was the year that I bought my truck camper. And Daniel, I loved that truck camper. I did a lot of traveling with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, back then, gasoline was about a dollar a gallon. I think I remember, I think that was like around that year that gas station opened up, like right next to the house where you were living. Mm-hmm. And I remember when they first opened, I think they opened up at like 99 cents. Right. Wasn't that? Those are the good old days, Danny. We're going back <laughs> down 20 years. Yeah. 20 years now. And that's how old my, uh, my truck camper is. But I had uh, traveled up and down the East Coast with that. I 
a couple of occasions, uh, traveled up to Pittsburgh to visit family and brought it on back. Can you imagine what I would have to pay today if I put that camper on and, say, traveled up to Pennsylvania or to New York or wherever? It'd be, uh, it'd be pretty penny. Oh, yes. Sure. Uh, you make sure both those tanks work, that's for sure. <laughs> well, they, they, and they did back then, too. Yeah. And it didn't really cost me a whole lot to fill them up. Yeah. But today, it's a totally different ball game. And I, I bring this up because I know there are a lot of folks and a lot of our listeners, too, uh, who are RVers, you know, like yourself. You know, you, you have a, a pop-up camper you pull along, maybe a travel trailer. Uh, maybe you're driving a motorhome. But whatever the case may be, as long as you're on the road and you're traveling, you're going to be burning fuel, more so than you would if you were driving maybe a little compact car. So anytime that you're bringing uh, equipment with you, anytime that you're hauling something like a travel trailer, yes, you're going to be burning up the fuel. And for some people, I'm sure they're going to be feeling the pinch because in the summertime, you've got to plan this. You've got to budget gasoline in. Anytime you're going on vacation. And, of course, it may not affect everybody. There are probably some people, you know, that just say, well, you know, I'll just go ahead and put it on the credit card and deal with it later on. But some people are cash and carry. And, you know, if they don't have the money to buy the gas, uh, they're going to be, you know, cutting back on a lot of things. You know, just to get to their destination, it may mean uh, giving up a couple of attractions they really wanted to go and see. And then, again, it may mean also that you are going to be staying closer to home which is something you probably wouldn't want to do. I know you've said a number of times, Daniel, when you go on vacation, you've got to go away. It's got to be far away from home. Yeah, I'd say at least, at least 30, 40 miles, at least. So that's, your, that's your limit right there? I mean, I've, I've uh, come around. I mean, I'm willing to go, uh, you know, maybe 20 miles away. but For a long I mean, weekend. Uh, yeah, for a long weekend. But For a week, you, you, you like to go. Oh, yeah. Well, what I wanted to say about the whole motorhome thing is when we were down in Alabama, we were around what we call behemoths. These are like, we actually saw, Deidre can tell you, this, we saw an 18-wheeler, like, truck, but behind it was an RV. So it was like a combo kind of deal. And, yeah. I can't imagine what kind of gas that guy was putting them in. But I know a lot of these motorhomes, they take diesel, and I know diesel runs a lot longer. It's a little bit more expensive, and I know you can get a better price if you pay uh, cash than credit. But a lot of these big uh, motorhomes that they uh, they you know travel around the country with uh, run on diesel, and I think that helps a little bit because I think diesel runs a little better as far as miles per gallon. Well, I only bring this up because... You know, even though I don't get out as often as I would like to, uh, that's going to change a little later on down the road. But even for everyday travel like myself, of course, you know, you don't have to go very far to work. Me, on the other hand, it takes me about 40 minutes to drive in and 40 minutes to drive home. And, yes, I'm filling my gas tank up a couple times a week. And, hey, I'm feeling the pinch. So can you imagine what maybe somebody uh, with a family of four – uh, even if they're not hauling an RV or a motorhome, it's going to have to face at the gas pump if they're planning a long-distance vacation. It's probably going to pinch a little bit. Yeah, it is. And um, I I don't know how it is in other places, but I know if you're if you're about to go on a trip or something, I would uh, definitely go to – I mean, we have Kroger down here in the south. I know they have it like up in Ohio and stuff, and they have the whole uh, fuel points things, and I know different places – have, you know, rewards programs and they give you a discount. And, you know, like, I mean, if 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 it's an issue like that, I would do my research. But OK, well, Kroger's around here. We've got 500 points. We can get really good prices here. So we should fill up here and, you know, just kind of do some strategizing. I know they have a lot of apps. I know they have gasbuddy.com where you can find the cheapest gas in that area. And you know, every little bit helps. So, you know, I mean, that's a few of the things I would do. Yeah, I if, mean, even if you have the ability to, you know, find the cheapest gas in your area, um, the scary part is gas prices went up like seven to nine cents in two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know, depending upon the size of your tank and, you know, if you're running a, a big truck like my my truck, you know, eight cylinders, and it's, a, it's an older truck, but it, it does me wonders. I've had that thing for ages. In fact, it's a little bit older than a truck camper. Still running very fine. Yeah. So, you know, that's, uh, 
it's, it's really hard to pinpoint what the problem is. Um, again, we see it every summer, but if for some reason, I don't know why this particular year that the gas prices are going through the roof like they are. I, I did hear, and I, I don't know, that could be contributed also to the uh, the war in Syria. Mm-hmm. Somebody mentioned that also, that, you know, you could have, there's a problem there as well. So, uh, you know, like I said, there's a number of different reasons. I just you really can't pinpoint it. And for everything that comes out, Daniel, you know, you you know, in the news, you don't know what to believe anymore. Yeah, <laughs> you really don't. Yep. So, well, I know they have winter and summer blends, so I know that has a little bit to do with it. Yeah, because I know they they do they're supposed to do something so that the emissions aren't as bad. I think. Mm-hmm. You know, and then there's some folks that drive these high performance vehicles too, and they they require you know, the premium gasoline and the premium gas is pretty expensive these days. Well, here's yeah. what I want to know. I want to know if these like, you know, like what you were saying about the premium gas, they have more octane. Then they have that stuff that when you go to certain gas stations, it always wants you to buy the little extra gas thing. And they oh, say the additives. Yeah. Oh, the additive. Additive. yeah. I, I don't know if, I don't know if that's real. What is that? I don't know what that is. And they get you coming and going wherever, I don't wherever you go. I don't know yeah. what that is. I don't know if that's real or not. I feel like that's, that's hooey. That's, that's mechanic hooey, where, where I say. The, where the make it be quiet button is always broken. Yeah, exactly. People, like, jam their keys into the button like, not today, guy. Yeah, and then, you know, that's, that's, that's just almost like taking the uh, the telemarketer calls. You know, when you go to the gas pump, you know, you're getting hit up there, too. Uh-huh. So, you know. Well, I guess it's not everywhere. Well, I know sometimes, uh, this has only happened to me a couple of times, but I guess these gas stations, they let these people come up and they do this like uh, spray on wax stuff. And thank God I'm always in my mail truck when they come up to people so they don't bother me. But they, they hassle everyone who's trying to pump their gas. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't even want to go to the front to see the lady to pay them. I, I, ever since the whole uh, pay at the pump thing started, I, I just never want to go in. And if, if the pay at the pump is broken, I will go to another gas station. I will not go in. I, I hate going in the gas station unless I have to. That's pretty much what I do. I mean, I, I <laughs> actually, you know, is it, to try to make it easier on myself, I don't have a gas company credit card. Yeah. And I pay using a Visa card anytime I go to the gas pump. Uh, I've got a better interest rate than you do if you were to have a, a gas company credit card. Mm-hmm. And, and like yourself, yes, paying at the pump is so much more convenient, uh, especially, you know, when you're you're in a hurry. Anybody that goes on vacation, anybody that goes camping, they want to get to their destination, bottom line. Yeah. That's that's it, all right? And if it means, you know, paying at the pump and avoiding any extra hassle or any standing in line at a gas station, you're go- they're going to avoid it at all costs. You know, because you, you want to get to your destination. The kids are excited. The kids are antsy. They, they, they're just dying to get out and have some fun. And, yeah, the bottom line is get there, get there safe, and do it as economically as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if uh, Target sells gas gift cards, but I know if you have a Target red card and you can have either they've got like a Visa red card or one that attaches to your checking account, but they do 5% off. Um, so that could potentially be a way to save a little bit of money if you could get a gas card from Target, save 5%, and use that gift card at the gas station. Hey, there you go. I mean, if you have a family that wants to go on vacation and other family members want to help out, that that would be a, a neat gift, a neat uh, so-called going-away gift. You know, if you're you're on vacation and you need a little help, especially with the economy being like it is, um, the economy is pretty good, I want to say. But, you know, the gas prices are not. So if that can help a family out, definitely, hopefully it can uh, help some others out there as well. I would just I would just do my research on where you're going, where you're at, and compare what the gas prices are. Because I know every time we go to South Carolina or Tennessee or somewhere like that, especially South Carolina, if you ever go to South Carolina from anywhere, always make sure you have a full tank before you leave that state because you'll pay 30 cents less in South Carolina than anywhere else. It's it's crazy. You yeah, see, Daniel, this is what I'm having a hard roads. time. <laughs> and, you know, but, and we didn't talk about this before the show. Mm-hmm. I'm having a my, my real hard time wrapping myself around this idea mm-hmm. that these gas prices in the metro Atlanta are so high. But yet when you went to Alabama and you were paying, what, two thirteen? dollars My heavens. Well, the roads aren't as good there. I mean— 
especially in South Carolina, but like in well, Alabama. Yeah, okay, well, in okay, Alabama. Okay, avoid Alabama. the potholes. Yeah, yeah, definitely avoid them if you can. <laughs> it's hard sometimes. But, but yeah, you know, if, you, if you've got, got good gas prices out there, you know, why can't we have them here? Well, we did for a long time. We had a good run, Skip. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's just another one of those mysterious questions that I doubt will ever be answered. But, uh, you know, I'm glad you two had a wonderful time on your vacation. you have a, another vacation lined up pretty soon? Uh, well, our main one coming up is uh, Disney, but we might take some uh, weekend trips. So, well, we'll see what happens. Well, let's see what the weekends are like. Maybe I'll join you on one of those trips. There you go. You know, just throw the tent and all the gear and, you know. And uh, hey, Deidre, you know I'll I'll bring that that griddle again with me. All right, I sounds know, good. Y- yeah, okay. So you don't have to worry about hooking up your Coleman. We'll your just stove. come use your camp kitchen. That, that that's fine. Hmm. Okay, I, I mean unless you want to, unless you want to bring out your own gear. All right. So yeah. I'll bring something so that I feel like I'm contributing a I'll little bit. A spatula. You bring a spatula. I'll bring a spatula. Now, hey, I've got them too. You oh. know, you know me. I'm prepared. We're I'll bring tomorrow. food. How about that? I'll bring an appetite. Can I bring my appetite, Skip? I'm going to have mine. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. But anyway, hey, I'm, I'm glad you two had a wonderful time, and I want to take an opportunity to thank both of you all for being on the show today. And uh, Daniel, bringing Deidre on over. And Deidre, well, you're welcome here anytime. Yay. I know we, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm standing here, I'm sitting here, should I say, looking at Daniel, and I, I don't see you because you were in the, uh, it was Daniel called the Booth of Justice. The Booth of Justice. Yeah. I'm hiding. She's Wonder Woman, so, oh, you know, oh, where else would it? she be? Nice and cozy in there, isn't it? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't have to see anybody. <laughs> I hear exactly what you're saying. <laughs> but anyway, it's time now for our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. Happy Camper Radio. Happy Camper Radio. And this week, we are going to go out to the state of Utah to Dripping Springs Campground. It's open all year long, and it's a wonderful destination. Dripping Springs Campground is situated at an elevation of 6,000 feet in rolling high desert terrain near Flaming Gorge Reservoir. The campground is part of the Flaming Gorge National Recreation Area in the Ashley National Forest. Campers frequent Dripping Springs for its close proximity to the Green River and Little Hole. Russian olive trees and cottonwoods dot the rolling sagebrush-covered landscape. Shade is limited, and temperatures range from warm days to cool nights. Take a look at all their activities and amenities right there on their homepage. I'm going to have a link to it all week long on happycamperradio.com. And once again, if you don't have an account with recreation.gov, it's very easy to sign up. When you click on the link, you'll look for that little gray button in the upper right-hand corner. It says sign in or sign up. Get you an account. It doesn't cost you any money to do that. And once you are signed up with recreation.gov, it makes it so much easier to make your reservations online. There are so many wonderful recreation.gov campsites out there. I've been to many of them already. And if you want to check this one out here in the state of Utah, Dripping Springs Campground, look at their website there, and there's a lot of wonderful pictures for you to see. So definitely check that out. Also, some know-before-you-go items, quite a few things there. This is a wonderful camping destination, one I know you'll enjoy. If you're visiting the state of Utah, and Daniel, you've been there before, haven't you? We have been yeah, there. It's Deidre's you... favorite trees. It's Dripping Springs Campground in Utah. It is our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. Happy Camper Radio.com. And, of course, if you have a campground you'd like for us to feature on the program, get in touch with me, Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com. Be sure to include a link to the campground website. And that's going to wrap up today's edition of the Happy Camper Radio Show. Time to get out there and just do it. Just gas up the vehicle and hope it won't hit you in the wallet too bad. Right, Daniel? That's right. (laughs) Okay. Remember, friends, every pet deserves a loving home. I want you to do exactly like I did. Visit your local shelter and adopt a pet today. You can find us online 24 hours a day, seven days a week at www.happycamperradio.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker. Add us to Circles on Google+. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. The Happy Camper Radio Show is a presentation of Skip Uber Productions. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper. Daniel's a happy camper. Deidre's a happy camper. And we're going to do our best to make a happy camper out of you. We'll be talking to you again next week. Have a good one, everybody. You're listening to Happy Camper Radio. Happy Camper Radio.